life's not about the alleviation of suffering. It's not about trying to get out of suffering. It's about awakening to how to transcend the suffering. As Gautama learned that all of life is suffering, but there is a path of liberation. But the path of liberation is not around, it's through. And learning what is ours to endure is what's so key and crucial. Uh, as I was just talking to my wife about, that there are things that we know deep within us that are difficult, but they are true for us. They are the things that we are seemingly here to learn. They're the things that we're here to grow in. And even though they're hard and they're difficult and they're filled with pain and grief and sorrow, that they're actually the vehicles of our awakening and of our liberation. But sometimes there are things that we begin to experience and sufferings that we begin to have that are not ours. But some level of faithful soldier within us kicks in and thinks that we need to endure them, but then our body will begin to reject it. Our body will begin to manifest in different ways to let us know that we're not living in tune, that we are out of alignment. And uh, like for years, I was doing things that I was not supposed to be doing. It was not part of my incarnational agreement. Well, maybe it was, maybe it was, but to learn that it, I wasn't supposed to be doing that. But the point is, is that I had intense jaw pain. Um, I would have uh, hemorrhoids, as lovely as that is, and different tensions and pains um, but I think it's interesting that the places that I had those tensions and pains were the places that I really had to heal. And that was in my root chakra, my hemorrhoids, and also my voice, the way that I communicated my, my jaw and, uh, learning to communicate in the correct way and the right way and learning to, that my, my root, my fundamentals, they're, they're taken care of. Uh, and I don't have to live outside of what I've been called to do to itch and scratch my way through life. But our sufferings can teach us where to allocate and to align our energy. But we must know that it's through it, not around it, but through it, is where we are going to begin to really embody the truth of our self, of our incarnation, of our true self. And so the avoidance of suffering will only create more suffering. And the participation with the wrong suffering will only create more suffering. But the participation or rather the transcendence of the suffering that is for us, the lessons that are for us, to learn we'll have grace for that pain we'll have provision for that pain we'll have peace through that pain because to be here on earth is to be in a school. This is the earth school. We're all here to learn something. We're all here to grow in some particular way. And the way that we grow is through friction and tension. And so the avoidance of friction and tension means no growth. To coast means that you're rolling downhill. But it's that steady pace of walking in the right direction. That little incline uphill, the little bit of sweat under the armpits that you know you're, you're walking somewhere that you're supposed to go. You are on the journey and on the path toward the destination that is made for you.
So it's not the avoidance of it. It's not to try to find the easier path. It's to find the right path. And the right path is always going to have many inclines, many declines, lots of sharp objects and things to watch out for. But all of that is the refining and the pruning process to uncover the truth of who we are beneath all of this, to learn what we're here to learn, to manifest the being that is deep within us, that is made in the image and likeness of the divine. And our suffering, the right suffering, produces that truth. It produces and reveals the true reality of God in us and through us and as us. But through much pain and suffering is the purification process. We even see this in the life of Jesus. When he is ridiculed and told that he has a demon in him and, you know, he's, uh, you know, just named all of these things from heretic to isn't this Mary and Joseph's son to everybody's got this box or this idea, this assumption of, of who he is. And, but he suffers and endures it all, even to the point of his own sacrificial death yet to emerge from the place of death and transcend the limitations of all of his pain and his suffering. And it's the cycle of death and rebirth that we have to enter into. And we go through little deaths and little births and that is our suffering, that is our pain. We go through all of these things and we purify ourselves, we refine ourselves, we step into the fullness through the avenue of the suffering that is right for us. So you're gonna need some wisdom and discernment to know what is correct suffering for you. It's probably good to have some people in your life that you can walk with, a companion, a guide, but ultimately deep within you, you already know. You know what's right for you. You know what you have grace for, what you have provision for. You know what you are called to do. And if you don't know, just take the next right step. Take the next right step. And when pain and difficulty come with it, tune into your body to have an awareness for what this is teaching you, what this is revealing to you, what this is uncovering about your incarnation that is true. And that will begin to be the guiding star that will lead you to the fullness that you are to live into in this life. So select your suffering with wisdom, with awareness, with consciousness, and you'll begin to step into the fullness of who the divine is in you, through you, and as you.